Hi everyone, this month we're going to talk about irritable bowel syndrome. It's a tough diagnosis to get and it's a tough diagnosis to make. There has to have been abdominal pain or discomfort at least one day per week over the course of six months without any other explanation for it. And it also has to meet two of the three criteria. There has to have been a change in the pain with bowel movements. There needs to be a chain change in the frequency of bowel movements, and also a change in the form of the stool. Without those, we can't really say it's IBS. And again, don't, um, don't presume it's IBS without having at least been evaluated for other causes. The causes of IBS proper can range from gut dysmotility, so your intestines aren't moving as well as they should, to imbalances, imbalances in your gut microbiome, and leaky gut, you've heard of that. There's also been an association with anxiety and depression, although if my stomach hurt for six months, I'd, I, I wonder if that's the cause or the effect. So on that one, we're not really sure which one came first. There are several treatments for it and it should be individualized. So just because colostrum is working for your neighbor doesn't mean that it works for you. It could be something else. So please don't shy away from being evaluated and having a personalized treatment plan for yourself. Lastly, I'd like to just remind you of the red flags of, of abdominal pain. So if there's rectal bleeding, if there's been weight loss, if you can feel a mass, if you have a family history of colon cancer, please don't hesitate. You should not have any of these with IBS. And there's several treatments out there that are over the counter. But again, if it works for someone, doesn't mean it will necessarily work for you. I hope you guys have a wonderful month and I'll see you again soon.